Hello and welcome to For the Birds with Richard Cole. And we have the distinguished Richard Cole here joining <laughs> us from his house outside where it's nice and warm. Good afternoon, Richard. Good afternoon from the distinguished and very warm Richard. <laughs> So we've got a hot show for you today, too. We are going to tell you a little bit. We're going to go through some of the things you're going to see today. And we're going to tell you some of the Coles Photo Contest winners. And Richard, you can tell us some of the things you're going to go over today. Uh, we're going to talk about, uh, first, uh, you know, some of the problems we're, we're experiencing as a company with the uh, COVID issue and supplies. And we're going to talk about what I call my best supporting actor uh, next to our really good fresh seed, something we couldn't do without that really makes our product stand above the rest of them for long periods of time. We'll get into that. And uh, what else are we talking about? My goodness. Uh, we're going to do, uh, and part of that, I'll, I'll have a couple of demos to explain some of the science behind basically some of our packaging. So that'll be interesting. Yeah, and I think we've got some new products that we're going to talk about as well. So it's a packed show. It should be a lot of fun. Richard, as all of you know, is our resident birding expert. So he's going to tell you um, any answers, any questions that you have. Just put them in the comments and Richard can answer them for you. So well, take I'll advantage. Yeah, take advantage of all of his expertise. Um, so we're going to straight go straight into it by showing you the winners of our Coles calendar contest. So our first place winner, beautiful picture of bluebirds yeah. nesting. That's Christy Eisen. And then we have, what, what is it, Richard? Go, Christy, by the way. That's a exactly, great picture. Exactly, exactly. I mean, what an absolutely beautiful, just captivating moment. And so congratulations to her. And then Berlin Pullen with a picture of the male and female cardinal. Do you love that one, Richard? Yes. That's just that's just kind of like a classic layout of, of a photo. And uh, I love the birds are being nice to each other. <laughs> Very nice. And I love just the contrast and the colors in that one. Yeah. And then Sherry Rosen, the picture of the woodpecker, all really, yeah. really good. Yeah, Every so congratulations to all of them. And then we want to show you uh, what they won so that you can always be thinking about next year when you want to, uh, to enter this contest. Look at everything that these this winner is getting, the first place prize package. And so she is just going to be set with all of these feeders and, of course, Richard's Tough Bird Feeder Guard. That's a great prize. I wish I had it. <laughs> I bet you do have it. And then the second place prize, they're also going to get one of these Tough Bird Feeder Guards and also all kinds of great Kohl's products and uh, feeders. And then the third prize, or the third place prize package uh, includes just a, the great tubular feeder. Those are so easy to use, as well as the Titan tray uh, feeder and the adorable Hummer High Rise, as well as some foods and some nectar. We are going to talk about the uh, hummingbirds and what to expect with hummingbirds right now. But uh, Richard, do you want to talk a little bit about the supply chain issues, what uh, the effect that COVID is having on the company right now? Yeah, well, you know, the times that we're in now with the COVID virus out there, it has affected everybody. Uh, there's no industry that's, that's gone unscathed here. And uh, we're, we're no exception. Uh, we, right now, thanks to our, our wonderful customers who are now staying at home a lot, they're wanting and buying more Kohl's products than ever. The, the downside is, that's not a downside, that's a good thing, but we're having a really hard time keeping up because we find it extremely difficult to one, bring in more employees. Uh, they're just not available. And two, we have supply issues from other companies to us and for us to distribute out, to get it out to the local areas for everybody to buy. So, and everybody's experiencing this. Uh, a good example is what happened to toilet paper for things like a year and a half. It took so long just to some simple like toilet paper to get back onto the shelves because of hoarding and stuff and just distribution problem. We have the same issues. We have trouble getting some of the uh, ingredients uh, for our good mixes. And we can't compromise and buy junk. We won't do that. We only have the best stuff. 
and sometimes it's hard to get it to us and then an unprecedented demand is, is there so we're having a very hard time keeping up this will this will even out this will smooth out like all these things will eventually go away we want to let everybody to know that we are working just as hard as we can to keep everybody supplied although there may be some times where you may have to buy a larger or smaller size of a bag that you wanted to, and you may have some shortages. You may have to change to a slightly different product than you were getting. Uh, maybe uh, uh, you might not be able to find a special feeder and have to get one of the other blends for a while. This will all smooth out. We're working at it as fast as we can, and we certainly appreciate everybody's patience in this time. Right. Yeah, there's just so many issues and there's so much going on with a lot of retailers. And I know a lot of people in the home improvement business itself are having a really, really tough time. So, um, but it also goes to show you how much people love Kohl's and we all need that peace and tranquility we can only get from nature. Yeah, we, 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 we love our customers and they've been so supportive over the years and they're so loyal to us because we tried to give them really the best product we possibly can, and we won't compromise the quality in any kind of situation like this. So we hope to continue that, and we hope to get back on track before long. <laughs> I know. Everybody's working as hard as they can. And a special thanks to all of the associates at Kohl's, because I know everybody's working so yeah. hard right now. So yes, we, our employees are, are amazing. They have been they really working are. overtime and staying with us. And thank goodness everybody's been healthy. And I hope everybody yeah. out there is staying healthy, too. Yeah, absolutely. That's so important, Richard. So we're going to lighten the mood a little bit, and we're going to show you a <laughs> song that was written years ago by a friend of the family, Sierra Samuel of Boulder, Colorado. And so we just kind of added a little video to her adorable song, and we're going to show that to you now. Richard, I wish you could be in the studio for that song. You would love it. All about the squirrels flaming squirrel seeds. I mean, the coals flaming squirrel seed sauce, which, as you know, is so effective. And you guys have a whole line of products, you know, with these habanero chili peppers. And we don't have anything against squirrels. We love squirrels. But bird seeds for the birds, and we have food for the squirrels. <laughs> That's exactly right. we try to keep right. them separated. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about your packaging um, and how it's different than maybe other companies and why people should kind of notice the advantages with the packaging. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's probably our best kept secret. And I want to call our packaging best supporting actor in this whole situation. We have tremendously good ingredients. Just if you're ever in one of the stores, you see some of our sun meat, pick them up, look at them, look at anybody else's sun meat that has, they're naked, they have no shell on them, so you can see what you're getting. The rest of our seeds are the same way. Everybody else is not that good sometimes. So we want to show this off. So we put it, of course, in a fairly clear plastic bag, but it's not just any bag. It doesn't stop at just the looks. There's some other factors going on. And uh, we have uh, what we call, we do what we call nitrogen purging. So as our bags are made on the assembly line, they come down, they get folded from a sheet, and as it's done, seed is dropped down in the middle of the bag as it's being formed. At that moment, there's a huge gush of pure nitrogen, a very inert gas, it's all around us, no odor, no smell, into the bag, pushes out all the air. Most of the oxygen dissipates out of there and we sealed with nitrogen and it's sealed solidly. So now we have a bag it has very little oxygen in it. Oxygen is really great for us. It's about 18% in the atmosphere. We can't live without it. Bugs can't live without it. Unfortunately, 
Oxygen is a very active element. It combines with a lot of things, like iron and causes rust, like with foods, it causes rancidity and, and degradation of your food product. So it's an enemy to things like bird seed over a long period of time. So without the oxygen in the bag, our stuff stays very fresh. The moisture content stays there. The freshness stays there. The nutrition stays there in the seed. And it's good for years. I don't, we don't know how long, a long, long, long time, but it wasn't, won't go bad. So what you buy in that bag is going to stay fresh until it's open. Now, the, uh, there are some other problems with that. If you just put this nitrogen into any bag, it won't stay there. It's going to move right out of the bag and other stuff will move right into the bag. You say, whoa, 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 wait a minute. It's in a plastic bag. It can't move out. Yes, it can. Let me demonstrate. The other day, I pretended I was having a party and went to my local store and bought some helium balloons. And about four days ago, three. What happened? Wait a minute. They're leaking. There are hardly anything left in them. Where did the nitrogen go? Believe it or not, it moved right through the side of this bag. We think of things as being solid. They're not really. It's almost like there's a huge forest of closely packed trees and you got a billion people want to get to the other side and they all try to get through there. They are going to make it. They just have to push and squeeze, but eventually they get out. That's what happens with most plastic. These little bitty teeny atoms move through it over time and the balloon deflates or the bag gets replaced Whatever's in the bag moves out, whatever's outside moves in, and you have degradation of your product. We have a special plastic. And uh, like I said, best supporting actor. This is a bag, not much in locale food right here, but it looks like any other plastic bag. Although it's nice, it's clear, extremely sturdy, but there's a secret. It's got three layers, at least, there may be four, and in the middle is, instead of just regular plastic, there's a layer that's gas impermeable. Gas cannot move through it. So although that would be on its own, a little stiff and brittle, made as a sandwich, a plastic sandwich, it's great. We got a strong tear resistant bag that the gas cannot move through. So what we put in the bag, a lot of nitrogen to disperse the oxygen and keep everything fresh, stays in the bag. And uh, that's that's a really good thing to have going on because our stuff is as fresh as today it was packed. Uh, we call it harvest fresh. And uh, because it gets to us, we get it in here, it's set. It, no, no degradation to the product. That's one of the reasons the cold seed stays fresher than anybody else is out there. And uh, we're very proud of that. And you'll find out that it'll serve you well also. And I doubt you'll ever see any bugs in our package. If there was a bug in there when it got, when it got packaged, it died. So mm -hmm. you don't have the breakout of meal malts and things that you find with the other thing. So like I said, the best supporting actor, that, that packaging, that wonderful stuff, keeps our seed fresh at the day it was brought in. So. Doesn't it also keep, like if you kept your seed downstairs in say a storage room, doesn't it also keep like mice and rats from coming in there because like, they can't smell that it's there? You're so good, Donna. <laughs> it does. And that's, that's a great benefit. We, we noticed this a long time ago uh, when we first started doing this. Uh, every warehouse and every seed distributor has problems with mice and rats because that's they love this stuff. So they come in and start tearing up the bag to get the seed. We started this type of packaging. We would have it out in the warehouse and we wouldn't have any problems. We had somebody else's seed out there. They would tear into it. Ours is sitting right next to it. No damage at all. Do we realize, oh, there's no aroma. They can't smell that that gas moves through the other bag. The, the rats can smell it. It's on the outside of the bag. They can smell it. They tear into the bag to get to the seed. They do not smell the seed, so they don't tear into the bag. And so it, it tends to stay uh, extremely rare for it to have any damage at all. And uh, we, we, that was a nice uh, benefit, additional benefit to us going to this type of packaging. Uh, you don't have the rodent product.
Yeah. So we do have a question, Richard. It's not about birds, but it is about <laughs> it is about your seed. Do you know when you'll have the forty pound bags back? It may be a while, right? Because it may be a while. Yeah. And yeah. and I'll, I'll be very very honest. You know, we have to uh, when there's any time of shortage of anything, you have to pick out what you can do best and what you can supply the most of. And so we've had to pull in a little bit to the most popular items and the most popular sizes to keep as much of that going as possible. So the 40 pounders will be a little while before we can get back to them. We'd love to have a bunch of them out there. We just can't do it at this time. I wish I could say how long it's gonna be. You know, this, oh, this whole thing is so new to everybody. We just don't know. But as soon as we can start getting the product in and can catch up, we'll have them. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I know. But uh, I know that you're just, you want to keep all your suppliers with Kohl's. And it's kind of like what you say when you advise people to just have some seed out there, even if you can't feed every, yeah. you know, you can't have yeah. every feeder full, just make sure you always have something in the feeder. So yeah, all of your suppliers, you have to make sure that they have some Kohl's and there's just not enough Kohl's to go around right now. Yeah, but we certainly a, wish everybody could get every size and every every product they want. Uh, we're in business to supply that. And it's just very difficult at this time. We're in there with everybody else. We're doing our best to get what we can out there. And uh, that I, I certainly appreciate everybody's understanding and patience with the situation. Absolutely. So we also want to invite anybody who's watching us to just write in the comments and tell us where you're watching from. And I also want to mention oh, yeah. that at the end of the show, we are going to show all of the semi-finalist pictures. So we're going to end with that. So that's something to look forward to. So right now we're going to switch from um, all the great packaging to talking a little bit about <laughs> the Hummers. And they are so darn cute. And they're coming and they're getting more and more food and they're getting a little more bold. We've got a great video to show, first of all, just a fun Hummer video. But after that, Richard, we want to talk about where things are with the Hummers and talk about the nectar and everything. Okay. So let's see that. So there's always some drama going on at the hummingbird feeder, whether it's the goldfinch trying to get a little bit of water, but it's always, or two hummers trying to intimidate the other one to get off the feeder. But tell us kind of where things are and what we can look forward to in these next couple of months with the hummers, Richard. Well, we're in the, the backside of the breeding season now, uh, and, and all the species across North America have mostly wrapped up the breeding area so the baby the last batch of babies are out and they'll rapidly become <clears throat> old enough to, to fly out of here down to central america where most of these guys go to spend the winter time so if you're in the south uh like me you're going to see an increased number of birds as the northern birds start moving down through here to get down to central america 
Uh, if you're in the north, you're going to see a decreasing amount of birds. Now, you had a lot of them during the breeding season. That number is going to drop fairly rapidly. First, you're going to see your males disappear, where you might see a lot of males coming to your feeders. That's going over the next couple of weeks. You'll see less and less males. You'll see more and more females. All of those won't be females. Some of them will be immature males, and of course, immature females and adult females. You'll notice for the, uh, you'll see some of the immature males start getting some stippling on their gorget in most of the species. Uh, almost like a little red dot or two, uh, like this double beard just coming in. <laughs> but they won't have a full gorget yet. That's your immature male. The other ones would either be an immature uh, female or young immature male or an adult female. They'll all look the same. They all have little white tip tails that the adult males and the ruby throat do not have. So, and of course the other species have slight differences also. So just notice that the males are gonna start disappearing, become fewer in numbers as they move out first. Breeding season's over, they're gone. And the females and young will start moving south uh, soon. We haven't started seeing increased numbers here in the south yet in Atlanta. I expect in the next couple of weeks, I'll see more and more uh, numbers of hummingbirds, less and less male. So we've got uh, a month and a half or so. We're what, early August. Uh, so down around October, we'll have a lot less birds. Most of them move through so the last couple of weeks of August, or excuse me, uh, September, late August into September, be a, a huge influx of birds through the south moving out. And that's always a fun time. I'll go from maybe four or five feeders, which is my normal for the few birds that I have here during the breeding season to as many feeders as I can put out, maybe 10 or 12, depending on how many birds are coming through at that time. I'll always add more feeders if necessary, but Aww. I keep out a bunch of feeders and keep it fresh. And good. I just love to see the hordes of birds coming in and feeding it. And of course it gives them a good place to stop, a good rest stop on their way. And um, I wait every year to see if I get a big influx of birds or it's left, you never know. And Richard, you've always put that sign out that says, Richard Coles, uh, <laughs> stop, <laughs> stop and rest for hummingbirds. So you, we Absolutely. do have a question. Yeah. Uh, Jay Potlock says, how is the Coles Nature's Garden Nectar different from the sugar and water mixture most of us use? Oh, good question. Um, we looked at, at nectar quite a while back and said, well, sugar and water, table sugar and water is very good. The, the, that's, a, that's a good thing to mix and serve. But what these birds are finding in nature is a combination of sugars. There's fructose, sucrose, and dextrose. And they pick all, all three types of sugars in most nectar that are naturally available. So we wanted to do two things. We wanted to replicate as closely as possible exactly what they're finding in the plant that they feed from in nature. And we didn't want preservatives. And so we came up with ways to get this done. Uh, read our ingredients. In fact, any of our products, read our ingredients. You don't find strange chemicals and stuff in our bird seed. You're not gonna find them in our hummingbird nectar, especially hummingbird nectar. It's sugars and it's water. Yeah. And uh, it's, <laughs> It's, 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 they really like it, by the way. Uh, we tested this for a while and the hummingbirds love it. And it's, it's really a good mix for them. Uh, and we have it available. I think it's been available for a little while now. It's getting out in the distribution really well. So right. yeah, pick up some of it and try it. it, it you, you'll, you'll like the results. We did have somebody make a comment on one of the YouTube videos that they had left the hummingbird uh, nectar out. Uh, it was a red nectar. They left it out for two or three days and the hummingbirds stopped coming. And I had just thought, you know, maybe in these really hot temperatures, you just have to keep changing it out, you know, really frequently. Yes. And that's with any, any nectar. Uh, if, it, if you're looking at, as we are here, right about 90 degrees, you put uh, any mixture of sugar in a fluid outside Without it being, you've got opening, so it's it's open to anything that comes up to it. And hummingbirds bring bacteria and stuff, and that's fine. But after some period of time, let's say two, three, four, five days, you've got a problem or a building problem where this stuff, start, the bacteria in there start developing, and when they get too too much of them in there, that's not a good thing. Uh, the birds can handle some of it; it's not really a problem. But if you see the the, the nectar getting a little cloudy or something, just change it out. 
if right. you're finding that's happening and you haven't thrown a lot of weight, don't put as much out until you have more birds. Right. So uh, it's just a good thing to keep your eye on it and expect it with any nectar out there. If it if you have a nectar out there in hot weather and it's been out there for a week and it hasn't changed or anything, it's probably got preservatives in it. You right. can go back and check your content. Yeah. So the, it, it's assuredly got something in it to stop growth of bacteria and, and things in it. So And that's not something you really want. Right. Well, thanks, Richard. Now let's talk about the new products that you promised us. So Coles has some new products that you wanted to tell us about today. Uh, we've got we've got a couple of things in the pipeline, and you know we we come out with uh, a feeder a little while back. I might have one here, and uh, the terrific tube, and this has been a, a big success because it's such a darn good feeder, and it is solid, and it looks good, and it's got this easy clean bottom. You know. Mm -hmm made my life easier. That's the part I like the most, <laughs> I gotta tell you. <laughs> the only thing wrong, the only thing wrong with this, it's not wrong, but I have to feed it up too often. So, yeah. TubeZilla. And we came up with TubeZilla because it's big, it's tough, and it holds a lot of seed. Yeah, it does. That is so, big. That's a nice feeder. So, it, it's gonna be coming to stores near you soon. We're very happy with this. Uh, I've tested a prototype and I love it. So how so, long does a TubeZilla last at your house though, Richard? Uh, depends on how many birds you have. You know, it, it, in, in a way you don't want to, oh, I'm, I'm out of seed again, but that's a good thing. Because if you put good cold <laughs> seed out there and the birds are eating a lot, you're getting a lot of birds. If that's a problem, if you if you can't spend that much on bird seed, just back down on the amount of seed you put out there each day. But put it out at the same time every day, like feeding your dog or cat. They know when dinner time is. They'll come by. You'll get the you'll get a good surge of birds. But otherwise, fill it up and enjoy all the birds. Uh, it's a good thing that it's all gone really quickly. I and, have to uh, yeah. I have to tell you, Richard. We had friends in from out of town. And, you know, we all sit outside on the deck and watch the birds in the morning and have coffee. And one of them said to me, I can't believe you guys have so many birds. We have, you know, we, <laughs> we put seed out, but we don't have this kind of birds. And so I just had to, my husband and I both just let her know all about coals and what a difference it makes. And she was like, you think the birds really, you know, can tell that? And I was like, absolutely. They can tell the difference. They absolutely yes, they can. can. Yeah. Yes. And uh, uh, we had, we had so ahead. many years of experimentation early in this game uh, when I first got this thing started and because um, they weren't eating what I was putting out. And uh, but after years of close experiment and watching and trying things, we learned what they really like to eat. And it's like a good restaurant. You put out good food for people. They'll keep coming back. If you don't, not so much. So exactly. uh, that's why the coals disappear so fast. Yeah, I love the uh, the video that you all have where you have Cole's food in one feeder and a competitor's food in another feeder, and they're all every place is taken on the Cole's feeder, and then you have one bird on the on your competitor looking over at the Cole's like, when is somebody going to leave so I can have some of that? I mean, that is the most yeah. compelling thing I've seen about Cole's, but it's true. And, you know, they can definitely, they can tell the difference. So we told our friend about yeah. Coles and we hope she'll start to use it and have as much uh, joy as we have, you know, sitting outside and watching our birds. And uh, and I can tell you from my perspective, it's now more than ever, you really appreciate that chance, that peace oh, yeah. and solace when, you know, all you hear every night on, on the news is just how bad everything is. Yeah. It, it gives you a little bit of an escape. Get it out does. and see that nature's doing fine. The birds are doing fine. That life, that's is moving on without a problem. So it, it, it takes my mind off of it when I come out. Well, actually, I'm out here right now. You see me glance off every now and then. <laughs> yeah, birds out there. I know. You got to always watch your birds, Richard. So um, is there anything else that you want to talk about before we wrap it up? And we are going to show the um, the pictures from all the semifinalists. But anything else you have up your sleeve well, let's there? See. I don't know. I've got so much. We did the show and tell. And yeah. we, we got some new products in the pipeline coming. And we want to appreciate everybody who's looked at and purchased the other Coles products, the feeders and the trays and things. Uh, we, we appreciate it. And uh, 
looking forward to getting the tubezilla out there for more birds, more seed, less filling. Yeah, and I can't wait to get one myself. Thank you so much for being here. Richard Cole is here to answer all of your birding questions, even if he has to do it from home. Richard has that dedication <laughs> to want to help you and help you with all your birding questions. So we are here every Wednesday at 3 o'clock Eastern time, the first Wednesday of the month. Thanks, Richard. Have a great afternoon. Thanks, everybody. We appreciate your business. Hello, this is Richard Cole. I want to thank each of you for watching, and I want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and don't forget to share it.